Hi everybody. Uh, I just discovered, discovered I should uh, do this uh, presentation in English, so excuse me for my uh, pretty scholar English. Uh, this, uh, this talk will, will be about uh, using Jenkins as a package, uh, native package factory. Uh, it's something uh, unusual, but uh, as you may guess, uh, Jenkins uh, is a, a nice tool for many, many uh, tasks, and not only uh, Java, Java-centric tasks. So about me, I'm working as a CI architect at Axway. I was previously a, a ops director, so in the IT, IT area. And previously, I was developer, team leader, and architect. So background both in production and both in, uh, in development. Uh, in my early age, uh, I was the founder of a package, um, a project uh, called the G Package. This project is uh, uh, done uh, in your uh, ma in major Linux distribution today. And this project was about. Uh, uh, Providing Java application and Java libraries in uh, in RPM. Uh, today, my uh, my hobby is uh, providing uh, Open GDK seven and eight for uh, OS X, and I am uh, also a SF member, where I was involved in Tomcat and XML RPC. So, what's a native package? Uh, first, in the audience, who is uh, using, uh, who is ops, and who is on the development side? Ops? Three, four? So we have to convince uh, the developer here to come uh, and work with you uh, to, to bring you native package. So a native package is, uh, is uh, really the, the heart of the operating system. Uh, when I s say uh, uh, n operating system, I have in mind Linux. But uh, not only. You could have the same in SolarOS or, uh, or even Ma Ma Mac OS or even iX. Uh, something fine with the native package, it's, uh, it's a system who handle uh, the, the dependency. So a package, uh, when you install a package, there is some uh, pre-requirements. And uh, this package system uh, is able to handle all of this. You could do automatic update or selective update. So for uh, ops here, you could select to update some part of the operating system and other uh, to get under control. For example, you don't want on a production server to update your kernel in real life. Native package is widely used by ops. It's uh, something uh, very, very common for them. Uh, here we have probably a major audience of Java developers. Uh, when you came with to, uh, to an ops with a jar or with a war, for him, it's something like a, an alien. He don't know what to do with it. And it's normal. It's not the, the kind of material he's uh, used to, to, to work with. Uh, good stuff also with uh, RPM, it's something very well suited for uh, cloud operations. For example, uh, more and more uh, people move their part of all of their production to, to the cloud. When you have to update, there is two, two ways. You could uh, bring your world IMI, or put, uh, rebuild the world, the, the world application, the world system, and, uh, and push it to, to Amazon. It's uh, time consuming often, and it's uh, a big, a, a, a big bong, uh, a big bong each time. With native package, you could inject just the part of the software you want to, to install or to update. For Linux packaging, there is two, two family, Red Hat package manager, the, the probably the most widely used. You find it in a, Red Hat Enterprise, CentOS, Fedora, on SUSE, and Mandriva. And there is a second one uh, named Deb, used uh, mainly by Debian and, uh, and his son, like uh, Ubuntu. 
what's a package? A package is a file, a single file. For the, for the ops, it's a single file to manipulate. It's an archive. Inside you will find data and programs. Very important, you have code inside the RPM, which is uh, executed at install time, update time, uh, uh, or remove time, some hooks. A package is, is, could be related to an architecture. So for example, could be enter, RM, power PC, in 32 or 64 bits, or it could be architecture neutral. For example, if you, in your package, you have a, a Java application, it's architecture neutral. It could be run on any system with a, with a GVM. A, a Ruby application is also a architecture neutral. Benefits of package. First, you, you describe your requirements. If you have, for example, an application server, you may want, uh, using a SQL backend like a MySQL, you could say this application requires MySQL server. So for sure, if you want to, to install this application on this machine, you should have MySQL server installed. And with uh, the, the package management inside the, uh, inside the distribution, at install time, it will ensure that the MySQL server will be also installed. So it provides uh, programs, data, and settings. Uh, you could, you could uh, register something very important. You could register uh, uh, part of the application as services. So for example, when you install a package for uh, uh, Apache HTTPD, it's a service. A service is start, is stop, is updated. Uh, it has a, a very uh, preci uh, precious uh, life cycle. And you have a, a very, uh, very strong control o o over the life cycle of your service or application. You know how to install it. You control how to install it, how to update it, and how to uninstall it. Just to be sure, for example, you don't have the, the, bad, uh, the bad way we have uh, with, uh, with Windows, where the, when you uninstall an application, you, you, there is still full of data inside uh, or in the register, register database. Our native package and Maven are very similar. They are both based with, us, with DSL. They both uh, handle the, have an, uh, a strong, uh, uh, strong habit to, to handle dependencies at build time and at deploy time. You could also have uh, and use uh, package repositories. So for, uh, for Maven, it could be a central or your internal uh, Nexus or uh, uh, artifactory uh, repository, but you could have the same in, uh, in the RPM, RPM world. And this package could be local on your own uh, uh, server, but they could be also uh, fetched from, uh, from the remote uh, using HTTP. Important point, uh, the majors, uh, uh, majors at Maven uh, repositories, like a Nexus and Artifactory could not host RPM like they host today your uh, Java artifact or your OBR artifact. So from, a, from an application to a RPM, how could it be done? So there is two, two, two ways to do it. Usually the OS vendors and uh, especially uh, uh, the Debian vendors take the source rebuild them, and then package them into the, the package. It's uh, uh, um, a way largely enforced by, uh, by Debian guys, for example. But in your enterprise, in day-to-day, -day, you don't have to do this. 
what you could do is to take the binaries already stored in Artifactory or Nexus. It will avoid you to duplicate the process and save time. But uh, for sure, it will trust uh, you, it will make your uh, delivery process m much more secure. You know your, your jar wow, has been tested before being deployed on Artifactory. There is no need to rebuild it. Just grab, it, grab them from your uh, repository. So uh, RPM, what is it from a, a developer or a packager point of view? It's a set of source where your, uh, uh, and uh, all is described in a single file named the spec file. In this spec file, you describe the sources attached, the architecture to be used, the build requirements, the deploy requirements, the build phase, the assembly phase, and the content location and rights. It's, it's a very, all of this in a single file. If you take a look, uh, for if there is a, a Debian users here, there is a, a similar approach, but to which much more, much more files. So using Jenkins as a package manager, what we know about Jenkins? Uh, Jenkins, in fact, is a perfect uh, job scheduler, locally and remotely. So what we, what we have? A Jenkins master, this master could get con fetch constant, uh, content from RCM, Subversion Git, and so on, prepare the build environment, and trigger builds on slaves. And uh, we know Jenkins uh, is very strong to manage slaves on a Unix, all the Unix, and even Windows. A Jenkins slave, what could it be? For example, if you want to package your a product for a, a large set of, uh, of platform, you could have, you could define one slave by target platform. Say, uh, I have a product, I want to be sure it will be built for a, uh, Red Hat Enterprise 7, Red Hat Enterprise 6, SUSE uh, 11, you could, you just have to, to set some, um, some slave on each of these distribution. One slave by target, so with the correct OS and the correct uh, uh, architecture, so we'll be, you will be confident in the, in the, in the OS. RPM is very standard, but there could be some little difference between uh, the way major vendor uh, bring it to the, to the end customer. With this approach, you are sure your build, in fact your assembly, will be uh, certified to work on this, on this platform. And then, when the slave uh, has finished his, uh, his assembly or, or build, it will deploy it on a dedicated RPM repository. What I will show you now is what we do at, uh, at Axway. So in Axway, we have a, a specific need for our own CI. So I'm, uh, I'm working the CI. We have many uh, using many, many Jenkins and, and so on. And we had the need to, uh, to master and to handle many, many systems for our customer who are QA teams or developer teams. And we have in, the, in our target list two versions uh, of, of CentOS, so version 5, version 6, in 32 and 40, uh, 64 bits. Also, we have OpenSUSE uh, 11.1 in uh, 32 and uh, 64 bits, and SUSE uh, Enterprise uh, 11 in 64 bits. So, for the build part, we have this, this target. For the distributor, we just use a single and basic HTTPD server. And this distributor hosts as a package repository for all of these distributions. Visually, it is done like this. So it's a very s a small machine, and we use the for, for this. Uh, virtual box. So a single, a single machine hosts the, the build agent for all of the target platform. 
So the kind of the kind of hardware very cheap. So the builder the builder take control of slave on slave via SSH uh, using a, a SSH uh, private key. Trigger uh, it trigger builds uh, jobs on uh, after SCM change, and it trigger jobs uh, on all of the VMs via matrix plugin. I will show you uh, this uh, in the demonstration later. For the slave. He build a package on a, on a known OS and architecture, and then he send the build package on the distributor using SCP. All of this is very, very simple. We don't use sophisticated tool or expensive tool. It's everything. You could have a cheap hardware and a, and a, a cheap distribution. You could use it. And the distributor side, uh, a tree index repository uh, using cron. So all of this is very, very simple. How it works in depth. When, we, when Jenkins detects a change in, uh, in the SCM, it triggers a build on all the slaves. If you see the, the picture, you will see all the, all the, all the slaves are triggered. So as I described previously, all of these slaves are hosted on a single machine using VirtualBox, so we don't use, we don't uh, make the choice to do the build in parallel, what, what uh, we could do, but uh, to do uh, one, uh, e uh, all of them one by one. On, on VirtualBox, uh, the limitation of, uh, of CPU is not, is not so good, so we say, okay, just do job for OS1, OS2, OS3, and, and so on. When the build is finished, agents push their, uh, their binaries using SCP. The repositories are then uh, indexed index, by Chrome. So uh, RPM repositories uh, use their own uh, internal uh, way to, to index the stuff. It's usually very quick. And we use a simple Chrome, uh, Chrome job. And now, all the package are available for everybody inside Axway. It could be a server, it could be a developer uh, uh, platform. If you want to, for example, use, uh, install on his, on his box uh, a Jenkins, there is already a package uh, for, for this. We use, uh, you, we use this approach just to be sure that the world CI farms of servers will be uh, up to date in a very simple way. And, uh, and very fast. Of course, we, we, uh, we may have used a solution like Puppet or, or Chef, but to us, it, uh, it, was, uh, it was too complex for our needs. The first way uh, we, we, do, we do it was to uh, create a list of package by distribution. One set for CentOS 5, one set for CentOS 6, uh, and each time you see a job for the 32, the 32 bill and another job for the 64 bit. It was a pain, really. So, if you, we, we dig into the, into, the, into the job, nothing unusually, uh, we, get, we get through some SCM. We push, uh, we, we indicate to Jenkins where the job will be executed. And the build, the build phase is just this little build.sh. It's very, very simple. So the second, uh, the, the second way we, 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 we do it was to use the, a, job, a, job, uh, a single job using the matrix plugin. Just to say, okay, each job are the same. Just put it on a, on a, a simpler approach for maintenance. So here there is only a list. We just inter we just see a package, the package we want to provide. For example, the first package CI admins is a package we bring us and inject 
admins and operators accounts in systems. Here we are using the configuration matrix. For each job, we say, okay, this job will be executed on this platform, this non-platform, this non-slave. At this time, uh, if, you, if you did not notice, I didn't check uh, the run each configuration sequentially. It's what we are doing now uh, because of the, uh, the lack of uh, isolation, CPU isolation in VirtualBox. If you launch seven jobs on the same machine, uh, hosting, hosting seven VM uh, using VirtualBox, it's a nightmare and it's usually a counter performant. So we prefer bring all the power on one instance. Uh, it's, uh, it's much more uh, uh, performant. So before I, 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 I get into the, um, the demonstration, there is some, stri some tricks. For uh, the CentOS and the uh, uh, Red Hat Enterprise uh, way, there is one repository to be built by architecture. So if you have 32 and 64 bits, you should uh, host two repositories and uh, to push the content on the two repositories. So even a native package, which could work on 32 and 64 bits, should be uh, should be duplicated on the on the uh, on the bus repositories. So here we have one slave by architecture for native and use one uh, one slave builder by Arch even for an, an, um, no Arch package just to be sure the, the stuff will be uh, uh, will be bring up to the to the correct uh, repository. For SUSE and uh, OpenSUSE, there is a, a different approach. Uh, SUSE uses, uh, by distribution, a common repository. And this repository is split up in, uh, into, uh, into three parts. One part native 34 bits, 32 bits, one part 64 bits, and one part for the OH. And it's perfect for, uh, uh, it's perfect for us who uh, manipulate mainly uh, Java application. So we use a uh, one, one slave by architecture when there is need to, to build a, uh, a native, uh, native uh, application. In, uh, in the previous example, I, I'll show only uh, um, Java application, but there is native uh, application also. But you could use to produce your, uh, your no arch uh, uh, package a 32 builder or 44 builder, it's, a, it's either. Let me show you how it works in depth. Is it, uh, did you see it? Well, okay. So here are the, the various uh, jobs we have defined. So. If you take a look, we even uh, uh, build our own GVM. Something very important. We don't want we don't want to be dependent on the way Sun or Sun or Rock, IBM, or even for the G Rocket is bundled and provided on the distribution. We wrap the native, the binary uh, uh, GVM and repackage it to fit uh, on it. Let's take, uh, let's, let's take uh, an example, a working example, I hope. So we have many tools here. Let's say there is something we change in, uh, in Jenkins. For example, uh, it to, for each release of Jenkins, we update, the, we update the nominal version in the SEM and the, and the builds are, uh, are provided automatically. So, for example, what, uh, that's what uh, happened uh, yesterday. Uh, yes, yesterday. So yesterday Jenkins, uh, the latest version of Jenkins was released. We updated it in the SCM and it was built automatically. 
let's dig into the into the the configuration. So here we have two SEM, one for the description of the of the of the project and another one for the for the build uh, so for the build tools and especially for the for the tools to to send the contents to the to the SEM to the uh, repository. So we use SCM uh, SVN update. We we check for the uh, SCM about uh, each uh, each five minutes, and here we define the nodes. Not here, here, where the build will be started. So as soon as Jenkins detects a change in SCM, it will start the job. Sequen sequentially on all of these build, all of these uh, of these builder. So, if for example, when uh, CentOS uh, Seven will uh, will be out, uh, we'll add new new builder here, and we will we will uh, build uh, the package for the these two new uh, new OS. And if you s we see, the system is uh, very simple. A build. And then a deploy. And for the deploy, we specify the distribution server, the application, uh, uh, the, the package build, the source, and the um, and the destination, uh, the the pack, the kind of uh, architecture. So in this case, no harsh, and the and the release version. Let's see if it works. It should work. So I trigger, I trigger a build manually just to see how it, how it works. It works the it works the build the build process on the first on the first slave. Everything is done here. So this kind of output is what you have usually when uh, when you build uh, when you build a package. The package is down. Okay. It's now running on the se on the second slave. Oh, it's already finished. The machine is too quick. So each each process, each package building, is done uh, is done by by save. And at the end, all the package will be sent to the to the distributor system. Which one is running? This one. CentOS 5 are a bit a bit slower. All of this, which is fine here. It's uh, you you are using uh, uh, the kind of tool your dev team. For uh, if you are a dev team, you're using the same tool you are using for your Java Java business. But uh, if you are uh, on the upside. You could use the same tool that your uh, developers are using today. Uh, there is, a, uh, to, for this kind of uh, of build, usually uh, there is other tool much more native like Buildbots. But uh, if you have problem with this with them, you can't, as as an ops, ask to your dev team say, hey, there is something wrong. Well, uh, could you help me? Say, hey, it's nice, but uh, you are using your own. Uh, build tool. I'm using mine. So uh, came to my uh, came to my uh, build tool, and I will be able to to help you. Uh, important here, uh, this approach is a, is a, is a good approach if you want to push in, in inside your your company the DevOps approach. Say we are using the same tool. We don't have the same business, but we are using the same tool. And here. Uh, uh, with the sourcing on the SEM, so the corporate SEM, and using the same uh, build engine, you could say, hey, Dave, let's, uh, let's, uh, uh, Kim, I will show you how to do a package. And if the dev say, oh, it's, it's uh, easy, it's, uh, and it's useful for me, maybe he will include this, uh, this package, so this, this approach or, or delivery uh, in his own uh, build process. 
So that's all. It's finished. It was fast. Why it was fast? Primarily because we don't rebuild from source. We just take the binary table from uh, from the dist from the um, Jenkins site, unzip it, uh, untar it, and rearrange it uh, with your uh, with your own common uh, layout. If I take a look of the of the layout. You could say here the layout. So, for example, this kind of layout. So, uh, uh, to follow FHS recommendation and just to avoid to discuss between dev and apps for hours and hours, we decide to follow the FHS uh, uh, approach and to stuff to, to store all our stuff into a slash up and the company a company uh, slash up company. And then we have. Uh, some content into slash opt. But we have also uh, content, so it's not seen it, but uh, I, I could uh, show you uh, really fast. We have content in, uh, in slash opt, so it's for the data. Usually this, di this uh, directory is uh, owned by root, so without access. And uh, uh, working data or li uh, um, data library or not by the service account. So in this case, uh, it's, uh, it will be uh, CI Jenkins. So we have two, two locations, two very different locations. One for the, for the code and one for the data. For the data, it's much more secure, uh, protected only to have root access. So for just good habits of security. Uh, Important, uh, important to to notice. We put all the configuration outside the many files. Uh, uh, we we have uh, usually, for example, uh, usually it works. All the configuration for the Jenkins service is located at the same at the same uh, location. You find all the uh, the other package or uh, other uh, other tool uh, installed in the system. It's here, and everything here has. Uh, it's it's clear for uh, people in the back of the larger yes. Larger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It should be nice. Better? All the application settings are in the single file. Why? Because is, if you want to please your, your ops, please avoid to spray information in uh, ma so many files. So what we have here, and is, this is one of the interest of the native package approach, is to say, okay, I put all the configuration information in single file with a single format. Usually ops are not very uh, happy with XML. Uh, you may uh, have noticed. And we have a sort of pre bootstrap before starting the application. We say, okay, I take this value and I will inject in the relative, uh, um, relative file. For example, server.xml or, or um, catalina.properties. And everything here is defined here. Even the GVM configuration. And this is nice, a, nice, a nice way to do it. So if you have performance uh, issues or if you want to, to increase, you just say, okay, ops, 
please update raise the GVM from uh, two gigabyte to four to to three gigabyte, for example, and it will know how to do it and where to do it. Uh, also, very important when the, uh, a nice a nice point with the, uh, with the package. This file, when this file has been updated by uh, by a system, in, has been updated on the system. If you update the package, the package system will take care of this and say, "Oh, this file has been modified," and the the modified file is the more important. I put the new file, but with a new suffix. So you have to handle the possible uh, the, the potential change by hand. Just to be sure, at update time, you won't drop all your ops job. And it will be, in this case, very, very unhappy. I was, a, uh, I was an ops, and I was very, very unhappy when guys change things like this. Did you have questions? Recommendations? Are you tired? Hungry? Uh, in English, then. In your team, who's uh, responsible for writing the spec file? The sp for the spec file? Yeah. Uh, it's an interesting story. Uh, when I, uh, when I, uh, I, I'm pretty new in x -ray. I started in January. And uh, I work with, uh, what I say, my young padawan. A very young guy. Huh? Uh, it's uh, Jean-Denis, uh, who was in the university two years ago. And I say, some, uh, a nice guy, very, very well sweet, and say, oh, it's a nice approach, but I don't know anything about spec file. Say, OK, we'll, we will learn together. And no, he's maintaining this spec file. And it takes about two, one or two weeks to learn how to do this. So with a good tutor, say, OK, you have a case where you want to embed an application in Tomcat. This is the way to do it. You want to handle uh, a set of uh, user accounts. It is uh, where uh, uh, we will do this. Uh, we will do it like this. And now he's under all of this, all this stuff by uh, by by him, it's himself. A young guy, nice guy, but young. Now I was saying that because <coughs> we do that in our in my company, uh, doing native packages. And uh, you talked about DevOps approach and the good thing we try to put in place is the, the operational guy and the dev guy work together to actually not uh, write the spec file but the Debian. Uh, well, equivalent. in a DevOps approach, so it's not the case, uh, I uh, may I wish you to, 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 to see us uh, tomorrow at, uh, at DevOps. <laughs> we will have a show in the university about this and we will discuss about the RPM package. Uh, but uh, usually it should be uh, due by, uh, by both. So, for example, we worked yesterday with uh, the dev guy of the team, the dev, the bad guy, the dev guy, and uh, and we discussed many interesting points. Say, hey, how do you, uh, where are defined the login password? Where, and uh, I bring him, I bring him the first part of the the, the initial uh, spec, and he updated it in uh, one hour, less, Pierre Antoine, one hour. So, but the interesting point is that ops and devs, the devs guys discuss about real, real, uh, real point. Where uh, how could I uh, uh, push configuration on the, uh, uh, outside the application in a common location? Uh, uh, you have you have ports. You have uh, you have to set the GVM. You have to define the ports. You have to define the. Uh, the, uh, uh, for example, even the, the SQL engine, all of this is discussed between the ops and the dev guys. So I, I say as a bootstrap, it could be done by ops guys, but uh, uh, it will be better uh, to do it with, with the dev guys, even if they discuss about change or update in the spec file, but if the devs, if the devs take con full control of the spec file, it's, it's better for the guy say, okay, I learn, uh, I learn them what I want and how to do it, know they handle it. And it will be entering the, the full, the, the full uh, uh, continuous integration and in this case, continuous uh, deployment step. It will be uh, part of their uh, 
of their delivery uh, uh, engagement. Yeah, I agree. That's what we do. Developers have to deliver the, the packages yes. and the way of packaging them, but in agreement with the operational team. It's a, that's a good approach. No more question. Do you want to do package with Jenkins? To ease your life. No, not your life, but maybe your ops life. It will be it will be very happy to to operate your your development uh, this way. Okay. So uh, thank you for uh, thank you for for all and uh, as a nice time. It's uh, I guess it's lunch time. Thank you.